Hello everyone, Jack here. Welcome to a short review of the Simflix special, A Serious Flanders Part 1. This episode is definitely one of the most out-of-the-box things that The Simpsons have done in years, as the show eschews the typical sitcom aspects of the show in favor of a crime drama. Of course, this episode is a parody of prestige-like shows such as The Sopranos and Breaking Bad, which are high-intensity affairs. Because this show acts outside of the regular Simpsons canon, whatever it may be, no characters are safe. In the beginning of the episode, the least sympathetic character of the show the rich Texan bites the dust because he had a debt to pay to a crazed, malicious debt collector, Costas Becker, voiced by Brian Cox. And you might be asking yourself, why do I say the rich Texan is the least sympathetic character and not Mr. Burns? Well, Mr. Burns is Bobo. For me? Bobo? <gasps> Smithers, I'm so happy. Something amazing has happened. I'm actually happy. Take a note. From now on, I'm only going to be good and kind to everyone. After the Texans' brutal murder, we get a cut to Ned Flanders, as the episode perfectly sets up the non-canon aspect as to not upset fans. As you know, we've had quite a few base breakers over the years, but it also makes fun about how shows start out saying that the story that is going to unfold is quote, based on a true story, end quote, or something else of that ilk. Basically, when a show starts like that, it's attempting to avoid telling you how much the show is sensationalized for your entertainment. Hey, you knew if you looked at the thumbnail for this video closely enough that the Simpsons were going to have some fun with this concept. So the promotional trailer for this two-parter portrayed Ned Flanders as a suspect, which I'm sure that nobody really thought because, you know, it's Ned Flanders. What could he possibly do wrong? Well, he kind of does something wrong, according to him at least, but he's really put through a bunch of unfortunate circumstances in this one. It starts when he stumbles upon a hidden bag full of thousands of dollars of cash. And if you look at this still here, you can see another fake out from the trailer, as it looked like someone's face got crushed by a tree. But what really happens is that Flanders' head broke through the hollow tree without much injury. And at this point, I should mention that Homer is also there, because he's important to the story as well. Though he's here for much different reasons than Ned. Flanders is helping to clean up the town by choice, while Homer is forced to do community service from a judge. And with regard to the money, Homer only came to laugh at Flanders, as he suspected that Ned was hurt after he heard him fall. And unsurprisingly, Homer is insanely jealous that Ned found over 100 k in the woods. More on that later, though. With a seemingly fortunate windfall of cash, we see a series of events that soon turn out to be extremely unfortunate for old Nettie. Being his usual selfless self, he decides to donate the money to an orphanage after having a flashback to his childhood when he was with his grandfather. Yeah, this is the first appearance of Flanders' grandpa on the show, and he's only appeared in a book written by Matt Granny in 2008 called Ned Flanders' Book of Faith. Yeah, there's your one tidbit of Simpsons trivia for this episode. This flashback is something we wouldn't normally see in a regular Simpsons episode, as it wasn't a comedic bit, but rather it is a dramatic moment to move the plot forward. We see that Flanders' grandfather was a benevolent man, in contrast to his lousy beatnik parents, and his grandfather was an orphan, which motivates Ned to give the money to the local orphanage. And this is where the show starts to take a turn for the worse. The proprietor of the orphanage, a woman named Barbara Belfry, convinces him to donate it in someone's name, when Ned initially wants to give it anonymously. And of course, Ned gives it in the name of his grandfather, Ned Flanders. But really, it's Ned having a moment of vanity and wanting to receive credit for once in his life. And normally it wouldn't be so bad, but the disaster is that the money was loaned out by the debt collector, Costas Becker, 50 years ago, and he's been wanting to collect that debt for a long, long time. So I guess that God is punishing Ned severely for his momentary slip. I guess God doesn't favor Flanders all the time then. Oh, and the part where the debt collector finds out that Ned has the money is a funny moment, as it is via a news broadcast. But they don't even blur out Ned's prominent mustache when he wants in Amenity. But really, the whole town will know because he has his name put on the donation, even if he shares it with his deceased granddad. Later on in the episode, Ned tells God that the money, quote, wasn't in my name, end quote, but it clearly was. So you know, the moral of the story is that if you find a ridiculous amount of cash in the woods, hand it over to the police, because that money was most likely gotten through nefarious means. As the debt collector is still in Springfield since he finished closing the Texan's debt, he decides to stay to hunt down Ned Flanders, believing that Ned is the owner of the debt now. Yeah, it's the reasoning of a neurotic old man that wants every ledger in his book filled. So even if the person who hid the money is probably long gone, the collector has to get revenge on somebody. Or you know, it could be someone like Grandpa Simpson who took the money. Now that would be an interesting twist. Because they have to explain who hid the money in the first place in the second part, right? Well, regardless of whose money it is, it doesn't really matter to the collector. Sure, it's faulty reasoning, but the debt collector is a crazed criminal. What do you expect? So the collector sends his two accomplices to search for Ned. Two hit up comic 
book guy in the androids dungeon, where we get the usual snark from comic book guy. Then the female accomplice destroys comic book guy's collectibles in a hilarious scene. It probably hurt comic book guy more to see his prize items be destroyed than to have his body harmed. And initially, you wonder what this has to do with the story. What's so important about the androids dungeon? Well, what happens is that we get another guest star appearance from the scene, as it turns out that comic book guy is paying production money to Fat Tony, which puts the mob on the debt collector's tail. Which makes you wonder as well whether this is the real Fat Tony here, or Fit Fat Tony. Perhaps we will never know. After the accomplices rough him up, Comic Book Guy reveals that Flanders can be found at the First Church of Springfield, which is common knowledge to anyone that lives in the town. They relay the message to Becker, who confronts Ned in the church. But before he can hurt Ned, Barbara arrives with the orphans, giving Flanders a reprieve. And we get this funny scene where Flanders thinks that Becker is gone, but he was actually hiding behind a pew, in a hard subversion of a dramatic scene. And Barbara asks Flanders out on a date because this is a drama episode. There's gotta be some romance to add to the plot. Well, this episode might seem like a horror one, really, we didn't need to see the mutilation of the rich Texan's corpse. It also gives off Christmas vibes, even if this episode airs in November. Hey, I guess Christmas keeps coming earlier every year. But it does give us a funny scene where Homer gets drunk off of eggnog of all things and accuses Flanders of manipulating the town folk into loving him. Of course, Homer gets thrown into the drunk pen, which is equally hilarious, if not more so. Clearly, Homer's rant upsets Ned, but it's not seen until later on. So Ned goes home with Barbara, and we get the end of the romance. Ned finds out that Sideshow Mel is Barbara's husband, but they're kind of on cool terms. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this portrayal of Sideshow Mel here. Usually he's portrayed as a Shakespearean actor when he's not doing Krusty's show, but in this episode he's an aloof guy that plays video games in an unhappy marriage. There are plenty of bums in Springfield that they could have paired Barbara with. Choosing Mel really didn't make much sense. But Ned doesn't want to commit infidelity with Barbara, so he goes back home. Another incident that makes him doubt that giving money in his name was such a good idea. I guess there was only so much romance that could be in this two part. Harder, but I have a feeling that Barbara will come back in the second part, probably catching Ned in a pickle of sorts. Going back a bit, when Ned was in the church, Costas stole the front page of his Bible that had his name and address on it. Costas sends the two accomplices to capture Ned, but conveniently the henchman with the Irish accent lets the page fly out the window. He says that he remembers the address, but he clearly does not. So this leads the two to the place where all of Flanders' stuff is. 742 Evergreen Terrace. Yeah, it's here where Homer finally gets punished for quote-unquote borrowing Flanders' possessions. Though the retribution is rather harsh as the two take him to Costas to be killed. But Costas is at least sane enough to know that Homer isn't the man he talked to at the church. And he goes off to confront Flanders himself. Though the guy accomplice makes Homer watch HGTV, which is a clever form of torture. Yeah, I don't like watching this stuff. It's horrible when you're in a waiting room without a book and this type of show is on. So Costas calls Ned and informs him that he needs to get the money or Homer will die. And no cops, which is a staple of drama. But really, what could the Springfield Police Department do? They're just as incompetent as the Mafia. Speaking of the Mafia, Fat Tony and his associates confront Costas in the Lard Lad's donut shop and demands that he get out of town. Of course, they don't know who they are messing with. They let the waitress pour hot coffee on the table, which he knew was going to come back to bite them. Becker startles the mobsters and walks away. Conveniently, Marge is at the shop as she is looking for Homer, and this is one of his favorite stops. She yells that Fat Tony has a gun, which allows Becker to avoid being shot in the back. And then the mob proves to be pretty pathetic as Becker uses his plot shield to dispose of all of them, with Disco Stew and Mr. Burns hilariously getting caught in the crosshairs. The hoi hoi. And for some reason, Becker doesn't dispose of Marge, a witness, despite seeing her. Probably because she alerted him to the gun, or maybe because she wasn't threatening him. But it also makes you wonder where the waitress and the squeaky voiced teen went, as they kind of just disappear when the fight breaks out. And we don't see him again. I guess that the writers wanted to get the snake coming, intending to rob the store, and seeing all the dead bodies lying on the floor which was a great scene. With Marge, she finally gets a clue to Homer's disappearance as Becker accidentally drops Homer's employee ID when he walked out. Note that it says trainee for life. Marge gets to this point by going to Ned to ask where Homer is. Ned made up a clearly bogus lie because he was panicking after getting a call from the debt collector and didn't want Marge to call the police, believing that it would get Homer killed. So Marge hits up all of Homer's usual spots and for no reason, here's a poo. Wait, there actually is a reason for a poo. Homer goes to the Quickie Mart all the time. But here, here is a poo for no reason. For no reason, here's a poo. Yep, those were the days. So this was definitely a fun episode. A little too gory with the violence and all, specifically with the rich Texan and his face mask. 
But that's just the era we're in. It's a little weird. The show can show a dead body being mutilated and thrown into acid, but they can't show Homer's naked butt anymore. Isn't that a kicker? The episode itself may be interested in what would happen next week, so it was a success based off that alone. Surprisingly, the Simpsons writers were able to sneak enough jokes in to make this episode worthwhile. You have to give credit to the showrunners here for trying something new, and being experimental, because this is something entirely different. It's nice to shake things up once in a while and play fast and loose with the show a little. We could possibly see Homer or Flanders die in this next episode. Flanders is the more likely one if that occurs. It's really something where you don't know where the episode is going to go, and while you might say that the stakes are low, The Simpsons isn't a show about stakes. It's a situational comedy. So, you know, we'll see what happens next week. This video is already way too long, so I'll save my predictions about this one for later this week. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time.